Hello, everyone. How was the lunch? Good? I just want to check if everyone's awake. How was the lunch? To say, just scream just to see that you are. <laughs> great, great, great. So, uh, today I will talk about CSS. I have a lot of content here. I will try to not rush, but I will just keep a few parts that's kind of like old stuff, but the new stuff, I will put more focus on that. And start our presentation today about what is new in CSS. First, I think some of you know me, some around Europe. I have been different places in Europe at different work camps, but I'm a front-end dev lead. At a company is called Digital Method. It's a learning platform. We actually don't use WordPress at the moment, but I apply loads of things that I learn on the Gutenberg editor, and I just use in my daily projects, that's super cool. And also, I'm Google Developer Expert. So if you want to find me, or if you take pictures, please tag me. It's at Philippe. And on the side of my picture, some of contribution that I made to WordPress translation, the most recent one, learn.wordpress.org. Uh, and events I was organizing in Dublin and Sao Paulo. And also speakers in different places. I, I love to hang out with you guys. And so, I got, let's, let's talk about what's matter. Today, we're going to learn about Caruaru. <laughs> Caruaru is my hometown in Brazil. Uh, I have learned a lot with you in the past seven years. And I will just talk a little bit about my town during that presentation, just to represent and share a part of me, because I have been different places in Europe, and I just love how everyone's you welcome. And for sure, we're going to talk about CSS. And actually, I'm here in that picture. <laughs> that is a party that we do every June in Brazil. It's the Saint Days. I think the folks from Portugal also celebrate the same season. Like they have the, the Saints Day and they have San Juan. And ha that was a San Juan night, and I was in front of the stage, and you can see how I enjoyed that party because I just did the front line. And so let's talk now about CSS, and then we can come back to Karuaru, and I will share more about Karuaru. And for today, I'll just split in past, present, and future, so things that I can use for a while, and things that are new that can already use, and feature features that are coming soon. And also, we're going to talk about WordPress. And just for we understand, I think it's one behavior that probably some of you have, that it's just look for new features and see and think that, oh, that's cool, that's new, but I will just use that in three years or five years. Because we are just used to that. So the difference between the Internet Explorer 6 and 7 was like five years. And if you lived with for the PNG, the transparent PNG that didn't run in Internet Explorer and you need to do a fix, all those great fix that we have on the web, for example, Clear fix, that was a problem to fix the floating, uh, was for until last year at the top 20 selectors on the web. Uh, and it's still there. It's still in 10% of the websites. We still use clear fix to solve the problem about layouting. And I hope that that will disappear. I think the, the WordPress and the Gutenberg editor helps a lot to take out these from our lives. And and how the things work today. Today, we have that specific scenario. Uh, we have Chrome, Edge, and Firefox releasing new features every month. And we have Safari with regular updates as well. And some of the updates are related to the OS. And we have the good news that the Internet Explorer 11 is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I think everyone was like there. And after Internet Explorer 11 was gone, and we were like, oh, so, but we have those browsers release new features every single month. And I would just like name A, E, and D are different features. And then which feature it should apply for my project? Because none of all the browsers has the same feature implemented at the same time. And then was the time that I realized, okay, those new things are super cool, but I actually can't use yet. 
and then we, we have loads of tools to fix that problem. But the ideal scenario is not we use tooling to solve that problem, but also who make the browser, kind of like, can you guys get together and decide what you should do? And actually, was that what happened? Like, I think 2021, uh, a committee called Interop, they got together and they decide what's the roadmap for the new features for CSS and the HTML. And that's why we, now we have some stable release. And when you see something new, they are like broadly adopted because they just get together and say, okay, maybe it's nice to implement those features. Just an example that 2022, those are the lists that they implemented, like layers and colors, Dialogue. Dialogue was an item that uh, I, was, I was in Ireland three years ago. When I saw Dialogue for the first time, I just showed my friends. I said, oh, we don't need to implement a pop-up anymore. We just can use Dialogue. And they just look at me and say, oh, but we're going to take like five years to use that. Just like looking for the, <laughs> the full behavior that we have in the past. But actually, Dialogue today we can use in all modern browsers. Uh, it's available for all modern browsers. And some of those features I will share with you today. The other important initiative now, that is the most recent one, is draw a line to say, OK, those features are safe to use. So they're like, we, we all implemented, but the next, not the next, but the previous two release, we already is using them. And they are working together to document those things, or the W3C documentation, or inside MDN, have a clear sign that you can use those features safely. And the idea for that baseline project, it's also to create a line for each year and say, OK, this year, you are safe to use those features. And just going back to Karwaru, my hometown, this, uh, some of the pictures from Karwaru. We, as you see, we love music. We have love like how to do the sense day. And I will just use this website as an example and show a few things that I, I just noticed like when I was like talk with other developers that I constantly see in different websites. And for that, we'll just like pass quickly on that because we're gonna cover the new stuff. But those are some common problems based on the problems that we didn't know yet, oh, should I use that? Should I be safe and use those features? And what's kind of common to see that not everyone know that they can use that. And they are like with a huge support already. So the problem here are the header, the image is kind of distorted. And the, the card image, maybe you want to do that like uneven situation that you have different aspect ratios. And, but let's say that you want to apply the same aspect ratio for all the images. And the third item is uh, back to top. It's something that I saw a lot, just someone installing a plugin to do a back to top uh, transition. And maybe you can do with CSS, maybe you don't need any fancy solution for that. And the three solutions for that are object fit, aspect ratio, and scroll behavior. Uh, the scroll behavior, it's a simple solution, but it's kind of just to show that. Sometimes you don't need JavaScript to do that. So object fit, you have an image with a specific container. And then you set that container. OK, I, I want to just cover that whole area. And when I do that, that image will behave as a background. So, and I also can define the border center that is like the, the reference for that image. And when that image resize or do something, the proportion will be there. And we just wanna have uh, behavior as a background. We have a few good like things about that. That's number one, the image will be on the DOM. The browse knows when should load that image. We can use in that image, for example, lazy loading or fetch priority that we're gonna improve our performance. And also accessibility. We can also describe that image. When we have an image in the background, we, we don't have the capability. We can use way area to describe that, but it's not something out of the box that we're gonna have that. And just for those features, here are the, ver the, the version that you can use that. As you can see here, it's like, Chrome for a while, we already have that, Firefox as well. And when I was talking with friends, they didn't know how to implement that. And then I can also, that's just like a before and after. 
Uh, you can just see the image here, like how stretched the CDR, and here it's like how stable that image are because the container just tries to fit in that container. And if I want to combine those two items, I can use also aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is useful for you keep the proportion of the image, but also any container I can apply for a div or for a frame. And I can use, for example, to do a resizable uh, iframe uh, embedded from YouTube that is like responsive. I can use instead one by one, I can just use 16 by nine and that iframe will be responsive. And if I combine those two items, so in that case, here I have the aspect ratio and the object fit together, and I can just have one image one by one. For sure, we can do that on the, the back end to solve those things, but also we cannot decide on the front end as well how we're gonna show those items. Scroll behavior, it's, a, it's another solution. It's just a simple solution that you avoid JavaScript but you just need that selector. And for that example, I, I just create a video, uh, use the site editor, and I just tag the cover image with ID, and I just link with the image. I will just play the video here for we see. And I won't talk so much about the site editor, but if you wanna learn about site editor, there is a website really cool that's learn dot wordpress.org please go there visit and get that amazing content there and here i just include that css that i showed before and then when i go to my page i just scroll to the bottom click on back to top and if we have this smooth transition that will improve there are a few things that i will show you at the end of the presentation that we're gonna see how that will improve that and now Okay, that's the past things, like things that, for example, I saw that not, not everyone knows, but now let's talk about the present days here. So, um, we, who, what's using the blocked themes I read? Please just raise your hands. Cool, cool, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. Um, so the, the nicest thing about the, the new blocked theme that I can have like a file that's called theme.json will be kind of the, not the, kind of my, my styling brain, like kind of the rules of my game, and I can find uh, some features on the theme JSON, and I can connect those two items, the CSS and my site editor. And one thing that we can do, for example, we can find properties. Here, it's a shadow. Uh, I just set this shadow on my theme JSON file, and I can get that same definition here and use on my CSS files. I can like reference the variables for, for example, shadow pink. So I can just call here WP preset shadow pink. And I just use the same structure across the, my theme JSON and my CSS, and I can reuse that in my UI and have a consistent UI. And then it's a, one item that I, I really love because I was working on a project and I, I love to have that before because we have like different views and we want to have the font adapting accordingly the my viewport. And for that before I used this crazy math with like SAS to do that fluid typography. When today we can do that with only CSS. And clank is the function that will help us to do that. So basically I have a function that has three parameters. The first one is the minimum value, the last one is the maximum value, and the middle one is the kind of the ideal value that I will navigate between those two gaps. And that functionality, it is available now. Uh, not now, I will just go there, it's 6.1, but this is just comparing the before and after. The, <laughs> the project that I did before was like there, I have like different screens and for every single font and size and spacing, I need to define here, oh, uh, that font goes in from 18 until 52. I, I, I just put a like small font, it's not for read, just to see the size of that. And just think about do that for all the fonts, for all the spacing, and when I can just do that with that line. So that's a, a CSS clamp that's available in CSS. And the good news that we have clamp on thing JSON. And how we can use that? For we use that on our theme JSON file on the typography settings, I just set fluid true. When I set that, I'm capable to go here 
at my font size, for example, I have this font medium, and I just set here the mean and the max value, and then I will have that fluid text on my block thing. The other cool thing that we can do with Clamp, I can define my spacing using Clamp. Also can be the other way around. I can just set a value using Clamp for my spacing, and I can have those gaps defined and also adaptive to the viewport that I'm using. So if I'm a mobile phone, I can have this minimal spacing. If I'm on a big screen, I can have more space between my elements, and I can just use the power of FilmJSON to have that across my team. Okay, and now that's more like on the CSS side, uh, and those are the features that you can use today. Just remember that here are the versions that you can use, kind of like kind of new, some recent ones, but container query, uh, we had before, like as we, we learn how to work with media queries, now we have container queries. And how works container queries? Container queries, I will just show example here, that's like, is where we, we see that in, in action. Let's say that I have a block, and that block I will just define. Okay, uh, when you have a large space, you're gonna have two columns, doesn't matter, where we are, which device you are, when you get that area, just be two columns. But when you have a small area, just be one column, content after content. And here, I just have um, a card that will just like check when the container has like a, a size that is like until 407 pixels, we will just like set as one column. And just imagine that you can create your blocks and tell to your blocks each scenario that we adapt them. When you have like a, a bigger size or a smaller size, you just know how to do it. You don't need to care about how the layout is doing there. So kind of like we have an like independent like structure inside your block. The item number six that I would like to show today is layer. Um, that's a common scenario. I was talking with a friend during the conference. And we are just saying that if everything is important, nothing's important. <laughs> and that code here, uh, we have 206 important selectors. So I think <laughs> there are a lot of important things here. And, but sometimes that happens because we have, for example, a bootstrap or something that we need to overwrite every single time. And layer, what that feature does is we create like layers in our CSS that I can define the priority for those items. So in that case, I can tell that the least important one is the framework layer. So it's my bootstrap or my tailwind CSS. And then I can define other layers. And something that I want to see in the future, I was testing playing with the site, uh, the site editor is when we use the site editor nowadays, now I, I, here's just an example, but when you use the site editor nowadays, everything is important. And if someone has some issue or something to implement to, for example, see a way to use editor to not use important for the CSS that came from the editor, please talk with me. I would be interested to, to know and, and help with that. But what's that example that I did? So if I set here the least layer that is the editor, uh, so it would be the most important one. I don't need to set any important over that CSS because the browser will know that, okay, that's the most important CSS in that page. Cool. And this one I wasn't like any actual improvement, but I see some face say yes. <laughs> for, for a while, I used to go to my CSS file and write this, mean width 600 pixels. And I was like, it's a, the, that goes until 600 or it's after 600. And I just wanna test you, who thinks that's the, that's the first code here? Just raise your hands, like that, that line on the top, just say, raise your hands. Yeah, we, have, we still have a split of this here. Uh, who thinks that's the, that line here represents this one? Just raise your hands. Oh, okay, I think that. Um, actually, it's the first one. And, and, but he's still not sure. I always been asked, 
it, it is the second one or the first one? But it is the first one. And just is a small improvement that we as developers just help our lives to, okay, I don't need to stop and think about that. It's just like, I, I know how to code. I learned that's, that's the sentence that we do, like greater and equally than 600, and we can do range as well, right? And that's a feature that's available in all the browsers today. So, so far so good? Yeah. And as we saw there, we have loads of items that it's, it's already helping we build our layout. Um, but we can use some of those items, for example, Clamp and all the items inside our theme.json. But I want to see, for example, things like layer also coming to live inside the WordPress ecosystem. And for those items now, um, that are in the future, some are available in most of the browsers and some are like not available anywhere yet, but I will, we just want to share them and, and see how we, we can use in the future those projects. But before, if uh, you want to make sure that, for example, I want to try that, but I'm not so sure that I can use that feature for example, we can do a media query to check if our browser supports that feature. So I can just do a check, for example, if my browser supports nesting, and then inside nesting, I just use nesting CSS. And you can do for other type of features as well that I will show today. Number eight, that's a for me, it's like I was like waiting for that uh, for so long. It is has. Has is a selector that check if the container that I'm doing the, the this pseudo selector has an item with the rules that I will define inside there. And here, for example, that first selector, I just check if my card has an item with the class feature. So if you have like a store or something that you display an item uh, that you have like a sales code or something that when you have that sales selector, you just include that like fancy label that say, okay, this item is on sales. Before to do that, we need to use uh, JavaScript or PHP to just check if we have that item. And now we just do all the things with uh, CSS. It's not cool. Yes or no? Are you with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so if you're from Brazil or if you have been in Brazil before, those are my favorite foods then. That's for Northeast. <laughs> so I think the folks from Freitas was talking with me when he saw for the first time those pictures. I said, yes, I know that. I said, yeah, you know what is good here. <laughs> and so here's just an example. So when I have a card, for example, I have my post that it has a feature image, I can do something. When I don't have a feature image, I can also set a different title just to fill that area that supposed to have an image. And let's say that, I don't know, if the content doesn't have anything, only a title, I can also do something. And those checks are only with CSS. And I can check if I have that item, but also I can check if I don't have that item. Let's say that uh, I don't have an intro. So if I don't have an intro, I can do a fancy card. Or if I don't have a feature image, I can do something else as well. Has now, there are like, uh, kind of like a, a better version. There are things that are coming that we will check for other things. For example, CSS variables, uh, even the language, if we have the language direction, and that's just the, the first version of has. Um, for modern browsers, um, the, the new versions of modern browsers, we are doing checks, for example, CSS variables as well. For example, if I have a value that is like a, discount true, I can change the CSS, the, the presentation of that card, uh, just based on that variable as well. But that item is not available yet on Firefox, but we already have on Chrome and Safari. Uh, Safari this week, we had the WWDC that they 
have a full presentation over CSS and they talk about HES and new stuff that they are planning to do with HES as well. And the item number nine, it's nesting. It's again, it's related to organize my code and if you work with SAS or LES before, uh, I'm pretty sure that you have used that. And now we can do CSS nesting on CSS. Um, again, I, I hope that <laughs> Firefox also get in the game to use nesting. But the, what, what are the advantages for we use CSS nesting? The advantages for use CSS nesting that I can just set the CSS for that block. So if I want to do maintenance or anything, I know that everything is just contained inside that nesting selector. And for example, in that item here, I have my post block and I have the style for my taxonomy tag. So I know that I will just apply that CSS for that taxonomy tag that is inside my WP blog post. So, and we can play around, we can use like related, uh, related like selectors. That was the item that I show on the previous slide that I was like, check if we have support. Basically, we are checking if our browser has support for that type of selector. And, and then they will just check for, for the support for nesting CSS. And now we, we saw like the, the things that are almost there. There are the features that are almost landing in all the browsers. This one uh, is kind of new, are related to two new CSS, uh, not CSS, but two APIs, the web animation API and the CSS animation API. And basically we can do scroll driven animation. So if you, if you have worked with Parallax before, you need to use JavaScript to do all the effects to check if the user is scrolling in one specific area. Um, that feature is av available on the Canary uh, of Chrome uh, version 116, and that works in, in that way. So I have this cover block. When I was scrolling, my cover block will just do animation to fit 100% of the area to 5% of the area. You can see we have a few image like doing animations. Uh, and also we have this progress bar on the top here. And all those animations, it's only CSS. I just use CSS to do that, right? And I'm pretty sure that if you love animations, uh, I would love to see in the future all those like template builders, like when you talk about animation, just solve them with CSS, no JavaScript. Because like when you, uh, I'm not like, <laughs> always I talk about JavaScript, I'm not hating JavaScript, I love JavaScript, I work full time with JavaScript, but just to divide the, in the proper way. So the, the painter paint the walls, the electrician uh, take care of the, the, the cables in the house and it's what happened now, so that evolution of CSS, we have what is related to CSS, like layout, so keep those things there. What is related to the, the electrical part of our application, keep those things there as well. And just for we check how I did that, so I have my container block that I, behind there I just put like a, main header that I used to do the animation, and I have set my animation, and that animation is uh, from 100% of the height of the viewport to 5%. I just set the animation there. That's, uh, until here, is nothing new. The, the new parts start happening here on those two lines. And what I'm doing here, um, I'm going to, the animation timeline and setting that, okay, that animation will run uh, over the scroll. And when I set that, if I don't set this animation range, uh, my scroll timeline will be back top to bottom of my page. That will be the timeline of my animation. But we can define here the animation range 
and said, okay, I want that animation to happen from zero to 9%. So in that case, I don't need to scroll until the end of my page. I just scroll until 9% of my page, and then I will have the full animation. So the, the, the cover block that we have on the top, so if you look at the, let's try to play again. Here I'm 100% when I start scrolling. When I got in 9% of that whole area, the animation here is already completed, right? And only the scroll still happened back to top because I didn't set the range. So if I didn't set the range, the animation will go until the end of that content. And other feature that we have as well, for example, we can also define do the animation when that container appears on your view. So we have different ways to acting with that. So it's a really powerful API. I, I really love to see there, and I really love to not have all the, the JavaScript you're doing there and just like, okay, let JavaScript do his job and let's just take care of the, the viewport with CSS. And so, and I have loads of features that I, I would love to show. I think I have a few faces here from Rotterdam that I did that presentation there and I just changed the content. The friends from Pontevedra as well. So there I have show a select menu there and in Lisbon I have shown that, the tax balance. And we have plenty more new features available like, or coming or popping up. It's a really exciting time if you want to work with CSS. And also, if you see those features that can help WordPress to do like, okay, how we can improve WordPress with those new features, please open a shoe on GitHub and yeah, talk with the people, tag me as well. I'm on Slack available as well. And here, that link is the, the panel of the Interop uh, 2023. So the, the list was already defined. So the time that they defined that list, it's from July until October. And there was a funny thing that last year I was here in Athens and I show the image set feature. And I was just super happy to show everyone, oh, you can use image set in your background and you can show different versions of your image and your website will be fast. And then after my talk, I went to test that on Chrome and didn't work. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, all the browsers supported, not Chrome. And then I would say, okay, I need to talk with people. How we, like, we can have that on Chrome as well? And then it was the time that I discovered Interop. It was the time that, okay, I think that talk was born in the, <laughs> in the WordCamp Athens uh, the last year. And then I, I start talk with the, the interop. I have raised a shoe over the image set, and the image set was the item number eleven, like in the vote. And I was super happy to. I, I just open like and say what I would like to see. And so it's open to everyone. Everyone can go there to the GitHub and say, I would love to see, for example, a better scroll smooth API or I would, I would love to see a better way to set my background image. And everything's open, everyone can participate in that. So if you wanna participate, let's just be like on the, the timeline to check when they will open new features and just be part of that as well because I think that everyone that's here can help for we make that environment better. Cool? How so far? It's great? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> started when it came on. We've got about five to eight minutes for questions. So if anybody would like a qu to ask a question, you can come down to the mic. If you uh, have more than one, ask your first one and go to the back of the line. Uh, thanks. We'll start with over here. Here we go. Testing, Hi. test. Hello. Ah, hello. Hello. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, I have a question around, so you mentioned the container queries mm -hmm. and layer. 
And I know that at the moment, Gutenberg doesn't support container queries. It mm -hmm. doesn't know how to parse the CSS. Mm -hmm. And although I personally, as a developer, can go in and I've written a pull request, mm -hmm. that's just one particular feature. And there are all these other things coming. Is there anything that you would recommend for WordPress and Gutenberg in general to stay on top of CSS new features to make sure that when we do mm -hmm. decide to adopt them, that they're ready and we can immediately use them? Yeah, I, I think one that, that I mentioned at the end, I think Immersat was, I, I, I raised an issue on the, on the GitHub repo for Gutenberg. The, for example, we do that on other temp, like, template, like page builders that you can set an image for mobile version, an image for desktop version, because that's some, like, some browsers, not some browsers, some websites that when you set up, I think there is a specific scenario that you, I think you set your background for the cover image as fixed it, and then that image is not an image tag anymore and became a background CSS. And, and then we just set one large image size. And then when you have a mobile user, the LCP just go way far. I think, yeah, I think it's the other item that I, I would love to see as well, like image set and kind of like managing that thing to have like optimized LCP image, yeah. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? I think we've got another one here. Yeah, hi. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I have somewhat of a philosophical question, I guess. Is, so uh, there's been a lot of frameworks coming out lately that uh, allow us to write uh, predetermined selectors so we don't have to learn or use all the nitty-gritty of, of, or the details of mm -hmm. CSS. So, uh, two questions. Uh, first is, are those frameworks making us a bit lazy? Uh, and second question, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, and also a third question, how many people in here <laughs> still write raw CSS uh -huh. as opposed to using some kind of framework? Raw CSS. Yeah. Raw CSS? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, let's, I think, I do love frameworks. I, I think that you, you, when we got, for example, it was the first time that I showed nesting, for example, people were like, oh, that's what gonna kill SaaS. I, I was like, no, we won't kill SaaS because SaaS has hundreds of features that you can use, not only nesting that makes SaaS. But, for example, nesting can be a, a reason for you not using SaaS and not have like a build pipeline for those styling. That's cool. But also on the framework side, they don't need to worry about nesting anymore. They can invest their time in other new cool features. And I think that's one good thing. Uh, I do love frameworks and I use frameworks every day, but I think it's important for we see what happened behind the scenes because if something goes wrong, you're not like a CSS blind. Like, uh, something that I, I know with, for example, my friends, uh, they start with React. They never told JavaScript. And then when they have a problem in JavaScript, they just panic because they didn't have enough exposure to JavaScript. But I think, yeah, we need to use both, but use consciously, yeah. Great, thanks. I think we've got time for one more question over here. The mic working. Ilana, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So what an amazing uh, voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Philip, for this talk. Yeah. Um, I have a question about Clamp. Yeah. So as a backend developer, I don't spend much time with CSS, but when I do, mm -hmm. I try to read all documentation and understand what I'm mm -hmm. doing. And with Clamp, I found a problematic this middle value. So I understand the first value is mm -hmm. the minimum, the second, the third value is maximum. Mm -hmm. The between value is so confusing. So do you yeah. have a human understandable explanation about that? <laughs> it's kind of, um, for example, I, I would try to elaborate that in a good way. Like for example, my, Let's say I'm here in the work camp. I, we speak today, and I have the whole week here in Athens, and I have my minimal values of beer that is like before my talk, <laughs> and, and I have my maximum value of beers that is after my talk. 
<laughs> but during the week, I can go easy and flexible, but I, I can't go too much. And then the middle value is like the flexible part of those two ranges. And you, personally, I, I, the easy math that I do is like put like a flexible value on the middle value that is like 5% of the viewport or 10%. That will be a value that I navigate between those two items. So in, in that case, the 5% of the viewport will be based on the size of my screen. So everything will navigate based on the size of the screen. Okay. So it's a space between. It's like, yeah. it's ideal value, but like I always say, okay, I can be flex between those two points. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Great, thanks everyone, and thanks, Philip, for a wonderful talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.